go grab your coffee, tea, whiskey, who knows? And come get nerdy with me. Hello, my geeks and freaks. That was completely unnecessary. <laughs> okay, so I am a data nerd. I love my data. And that's what we'll be getting into today is I am a techie person, but I also love to garden. So I like my data, I like my tech, and I like to use all of those things combined to plan out my garden and make things simpler for myself. So we're gonna start out with my plan and I use growveg.com. And then I also use Google Sheets. So let me go ahead and get to share my screen here. Move this stupid little bar thing. Hopefully it's not showing my face in the recording. <laughs> That's going to be bright. All right. So we have Grow Veg. I'm going to open my plan and it should be this one. I do not think this likes a uh, dark view. It does not dig dark view. So let's take off dark mode there. Okay, this is my garden plan. So I have a roughly 3,000 square foot garden. The thing I love about Grow Veg is that this I can do by square footage. So I have my entire garden right here. I'm going to zoom in and then try not to move anything around. And you can see that I have everything placed in the garden exactly where I need it to be. So if I come up here, it's going to give me my plant list and it tells me exactly the quantity I need, as well as when to start indoors, when to plant outdoors, and when to harvest these plants. I then take this information and pop it into my Google Sheet, which I'm going to go back into dark mode because my eyeballs. From here, I keep the type the seed, the number of plants needed, where I bought it from, the price. Is it a perennial? Is it an annual? Do it, does it have an indoor start? The last spring frost date, the first fall frost date, our indoor start date, our direct seed date, our transplant date, fall indoor outdoor start date, <laughs> indoor start time frame, how long it takes to mature, if it is cold tolerant, the hours of sunlight needed, ideal temp, seed depth, seed spacing, days to emerge. So days to emerge is how long it should take the seedlings to sprout versus days to maturity is how long it takes from the time that it is transplanted to the time that it is ready to harvest. Our row spacing, if it needs thinning, and that's if you overseed, like sometimes the seeds are super tiny and you just overseed because you can't help it. Um, date seed sown. So this is the date I will plant them or did plant them in the past. I don't know why that says 4-13-2024 since that hadn't happened yet. That's probably from a previous year or me testing data. And then the date that it's ready to harvest. I also have a notes section. This is for my grow zone. This is for grow zone six. I have this for grow zones one through nine in the stand store linked below. And it is 1099. And that's because I have all of the data in here. I have links to pretty much everything. I also have formulas in here to calculate your indoor start date, your transplant date, all of that information. Once you make a copy of your spreadsheet that is yours, you can update it with whatever you want and your actual first and last frost dates because these are estimated dates. You can then do what I did and I went in and I added date started right here. So I know the exact date I started my indoor seeds. I'm going to rehide this. And then the one thing I did do, one of my hacks for making sure that I am keeping everything straight is I go to my second column here. Let's see if this will allow me to in biggin and not muff anything up. And I have 
my trays numbered. I also have all of my rows numbered. So I have cell one, one, and I plan out how I'm going to put all of my seeds in here. So if you see tray three, we have peppers and tomatoes because the peppers start before the tomatoes, but I don't need 338 pepper plants, which my trays hold 338 seeds per tray. But how, but peppers and tomatoes both need heat mats. So I want them in the same tray. So I left empty spaces and I have highlights on here to show those empty spaces and what I plan on planting in those spaces. Coming back over to our actual data, I do have all of this filtered. Um, their types, we have beans, flowers, garlic, greens, herbs. Okra got its own because I didn't quite know where to put okra. And then onions, peppers, root crops, squash, and tomatoes. In the spreadsheet, I do have my information to where I fall planted items, which are tulips and flowers and things like that, because last year I absolutely freaking fell in love with flowers. Other than that, on this spreadsheet, everything is calculated based off your first and last spring and fall frost dates. So all of these dates throughout are calculated. Again, this will be in the stand store. The other option that you have if you want to follow along with our seed starting series is I do have this in PDF as well, and those are free. They are not searchable. They are not typable. They're just a PDF. So those will also be available in the stand store. This is my techie side and my data side, and I love data. I love tech, and it is my little personal love language.